You're watching Tag TV. From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Hello, I'm your host Uzma Jafri and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give a glimpse of our country's diversity. The northeastern region of India is abundant with natural resources which makes it one of the most picturesque tourism sites in the country. Every year, the government of Manipur organizes a cultural extravaganza named the Sangai Festival which is a beautiful show of the state's art and culture and promotes Manipur as a world-class tourist destination. This year, the festival returned to its full glory after the two-year pandemic break. Take a look. Dressed in colourful attires, people of different tribal communities gather together to celebrate the colourful Sangai festival. Also known as the festival of oneness among locals, the festival is being organised by the government of Manipur for the last 12 years with a motive to promote the state as a world-class tourism destination. Named after the state animal Sangai, which is an endemic and endangered species of Els deer found only in Manipur, this year the 10 day event returned to its full glory after a two year pandemic break. I want to appreciate and convey my best wishes to all the people of the state, all the people of India, and the abode and having sending my best wishes to visit and enjoy the Shanghai festival many even even eminent uh, personalities even including the not only the union ministers and the chairmen many uh, film star celebrities also visiting here Around 33 tribal communities from the state participated in the festival and displayed a glimpse of their culture and traditions. Usually the festival is organized in Imphal, but this year authorities decided to organize the festival at 13 different places across six districts, bringing together Manipuri culture, art and traditions to strengthen the socio-economic milieu. The primary celebration of the festival was held at Sangai Ethnic Park in Moirang, where multiple herds showcased the culture and lifestyle of different indigenous tribes of Manipur. The festival also serves as platform for showcasing the state's handicrafts, fine arts, indigenous sports, cuisine, music, eco and adventure sports. यहां हमारे मोहरांग केंद्र के अंदर यानी मोहरांग खुनों में जो है संगाई फेस्टिवल जो हुआ है सबसे बड़े खुशी है हम, हमारे अंदर और हमारे मतलब जो है मोहरांग के पब्लिक लोग भी बहुत खुशी होता है और खासकर हमारे जो है मोहरांग केंद्र के अंदर जितने भी मुसलमान हैं और ये भी खुश होता है और इस जो है मतलब संगाई फेस्टिवल के वजह से जो है जितने भी रोड वगैरह जो मतलब डेवलपमेंट का जो काम किया है ये भी बहुत खुशी हुआ है खासकर हमारे ऑनरेबल सीएम श्री एन बीरेन सिंह को बहुत शुक्रिया अदा करता हूं मैं एज अ पार्ट ऑफ द फेस्टिवल द मणिपुर इंटरनेशनल पोलो फेस्टिवल वाज ऑर्गेनाइज्ड एट द पोलो ग्राउंड इन इम्फाल दिस वाज द 14th एडिशन ऑफ द फेस्टिवल a total of five teams, including those from the USA and England, competed with each other for the number one spot. Organized by the Polo Association, the event is held under the ages of Manipur Horse Riding and Polo Association. The competition attracts visitors from all over India and abroad. This had very humble beginnings. Now we have reached a certain stage where the efforts of the organization and the government of Manipur uh, has been recognized all over the world. 
and we have now teams coming back, players coming back, families coming back, and I'm sure that when the good times return, perhaps, God willing, by next year, the, the, our uh, effort will bear more fruit and there will be more greater participation. By showcasing the culture, diversity, skills and talents of different tribal groups at Sangai Festival, not only Manipur's tourism has got a boost, but has indeed generated a lot of employment opportunities for the citizens of the state. The history of Sufism in India dates back to hundreds of years. Sufis from across the world came to India and started spreading the message of harmony and brotherhood. Dargahs are shrines having the graves of Sufi saints that are visited by people of different religious communities. Recently, the color of togetherness was visualized in the Bareilly district of Uttar Pradesh where the Jashne Chiraga festival was celebrated by people of all faiths. Let's have a look. The courtyard of Bareilly's Khan Kahe Niazia lit up with hundreds of tiyas as people from different religious communities gathered at the shrine for celebrating Jashne Chiraga. Organized for two days, the Jashne Chiraga fest saw devotees from different parts of the country visiting the shrine and praying for fulfillment of wishes. The festival therefore showcased a beautiful example of religious harmony and brotherhood. This Chiraga is a kind of every program is like this. कि इसमें सारे धर्म सारे मजहब के लोग और मुसलमानों में जितने फिरके हैं सब शामिल होते हैं ये खासियत है और सब बड़ी अकीदत से उठाते हैं इसमें सैकड़ों नहीं हजारों की तादाद में गैर मुस्लिम हजरत भी तशरीफ लाए हुए हैं और बरेली से ही नहीं हिंदुस्तान के مختلف कोने से महाराष्ट्र से मध्य प्रदेश से बहुत लोग आए बिहार से कलकत्ते से भी आए हुए हैं वो सब लोग यहां आते हैं उनकी मन्नतें पूरी होती हैं the Jashne Chiraga festival is being organized at the shrine for the last 300 years. The festival also portrays a beautiful example of the Ganga Jamuni Tehzeeb, which gives out loud the message of peace and brotherhood. क्योंकि ये प्रेम के और रोशनी के जिंदगी में उजाले लाने के चिराग हैं आप जो नाउमीदें उनके चिराग रोशन होते हैं उनकी उम्मीदें आती हैं मुरादें पूरी होती हैं इसीलिए यहां दरबार खुला है और जो भी देखिए अल्लाह का वली होता है उनके यहां तो कोई धर्म का और किसी मजहब का किसी फिरके का कोई भेदभाव होता ही नहीं इंसानियत की خدمت होती है यहां सांप काटे बिच्छू काटे कुत्ते काटे सब जड़ते हैं हम लोग तो नाम भी नहीं पूछते it is occasions and festival like these that not only highlight the culture and history of Sufism in India, but bring people of different religions under one roof. And now a roundup of some of the major stories that made news recently. Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, was honored with the Peace Award by the Gandhi Mandela Foundation, a government-registered trust in India's northern hill town of Dharamshala. The governor of Himachal Pradesh state, Rajendra Vishwanath Arlekar, felicitated Dalai Lama as hundreds of people attended the event. I have this view when the so-called Western modern education not much talk about Corona. Uh, this should add uh, in school uh, Corona should include not religious point but Corona there inner peace inner strength so long, inner strength, uh, inner peace there, you can utilize human intelligence more properly. 
The maroon robe monk was selected in 2020 for the award but it could not be presented to him due to the coronavirus pandemic. The Dalai Lama fled from Lhasa for asylum in India in 1959 after an abortive uprising against Chinese rule. He has since lived mostly in the northern hill town where his supporters run a small government in exile and advocate Tibet's autonomy by peaceful means. Indian actor Sunil Shetty and Vivek Obroy attended the screening of the first episode of the crime thriller web series Dharavi Bank in India's western Mumbai city. Yeah, her frame me. You can feel Dharavi, you can smell Dharavi, you can experience, it's an immersive experience of Dharavi and I feel you've never seen Dharavi like this before. The cast and crew interacted with media persons as they discussed the making and characters of the show at the screening. The series, directed by Samit Kakkar, shows Obroy playing a cop who is on a mission to fight a mafia played by Shetty, with Dharavi, believed to be Asia's largest slum, being at the centre of the story. India successfully launched its first privately developed rocket, the Vikram S, a milestone in the country's effort to create a commercial space industry and compete on cost. The 545kg rocket developed by space startup Skyroot took off from Indian Space Agency's launch site near Chennai. It hit a peak altitude of 89.5 km and completed all required objectives, said CEO and co-founder of Skyroot Aerospace Pavan Kumar Chandana. We are very excited to announce that we scripted history today by successfully launching India's first privately developed rocket, Vikram Yes. The vehicle reached space to an altitude of 89.5 kilometers and completed the required mission objectives. This Praram mission, as the name signifies, is the beginning of a new era in the Indian space ecosystem. Video footage showed the rocket taking off from space center, leaving a plume of smoke and fire in its trail. It is splashed down in the Bay of Bengal about five minutes after launch, officials said. The Indian government has been pushing to develop a private space industry to complement its state-run space programs known for its affordable launches and missions. India is a land of religious diversity where people of different religious communities have lived peacefully for ages. Mutual tolerance and regards for each other's beliefs is an age-old tradition in the country. Several examples of citizens who are trying to preserve it can be found at every nook and corner of the country. A recent one was seen in Ayodhya city of Uttar Pradesh where Muslim women artists are building bonds of harmony by making garlands of flowers that are offered to Lord Hanuman in Siddhapeet. Weaving and selling flower garlands on the sides of the road is not a big thing, but it surely becomes unique when a person is making it, especially to be used by people of other religious communities. Setting such an example of religious harmony in Ayodhya city of Uttar Pradesh are these Muslim women who have been making flower garlands which are offered to Lord Hanuman by their Hindu brethren. These women in Mohalla Koti Ghat of the city have been making flower garlands for generations which are offered to Lord Hanuman at the Siddhapeet Hanuman Gadi temple. There are around 12 Muslim households in the Koti Ghat neighborhood which falls just behind the Ram Janmabhoomi in Ayodhya city. Almost all family members of these Muslim families are engaged in garland weaving, thus giving out a beautiful example of peace and brotherhood. मंदिर में जाता है हनुमान जी के मंदिर पे चढ़ता है तो जैसा कि एक आप लोग मुस्लिम हो इस तरीके से माला बना रहे हैं तो कोई आपस में कोई ऐसी बात नहीं कोई बात नहीं ना हम लोग प्यार मोहब्बत रहते हैं कितनी माला बना लेती हूं 
अब जिस हिसाब से बन जाए जैसा फूल आएगा कम ज्यादा वैसे ही माला बनता है These garland makers have huge respect for the beliefs of Hindus and feel happy to sell their products to them. They make these garlands with a lot of hard work and dedication and wait eagerly for Hindu festivals when their business of flower garlands shoots up. Such examples prove that Indians put unity on the highest pedestal and stand undivided and integrated despite all their cultural and religious differences. From the 14th century to the late 19th century, Persian was the administrative language of Jammu and Kashmir. It was also the primary language in which all historical, religious, and political discourses were written in the territory. Kashmir has its own galaxy of Persian writers and poets who produced masterpieces. In order to educate Kashmiri people regarding the role of Persian in shaping Kashmir's history and culture, a rare exhibition of Persian manuscripts was organized. Take a look. Kashmiri culture and history contains treasures of Persian literature, which is almost totally obliterated from the present realm. Taking back to the times, to the ancient times, and preserving the Persian texts from the ancient Kashmiri era, the Indian National Trust of Art, Culture, and Heritages organized an exhibition where the rare manuscripts of the famous Persian poet, writer, and researcher Khwaja Muhammad Amin Darab were put on display. During the exhibition, manuscripts along with books of Khwaja Muhammad Darab, who was considered the last Persian poet of the valley, were exhibited. This exhibition के दो तीन मकासिद हैं हमारे लिए. एक तो खैर ये personal archives हैं कश्मीर के आखरी फारसी शायर की, जिसका नाम मोहम्मद अमीन दाराब था. ये 1880 में पैदा हुए, 1890 में, इसी में 1980 के करीब. उनकी वफात हुई कश्मीर में फारसी जबान जो है पाँच सौ साल तक हमारी सरकारी जबान रही सरकारी जबान के साथ साथ ये हमारी ट्रेड कॉमर्स की भी जबान रही कॉरस्पॉन्स उसी में है उसके बाद हमारे फेथ की भी जबान रही ये माइंड का गार्डन है जिस जिसको इनकलनेशन हो अदब की तरफ स्कॉलरशिप की तरफ रिटर्न वर्ड की तरफ उसके लिए दाराब का जो ये पर्सनल आर्काइव है ये मुगल बाग से कम नहीं है Serving as an ideal platform for the revival of the Persian language and literature in the territory, the exhibition was titled In Shai Darab. Organized at the Amar Singh Club in the Sonwar area of Srinagar, 33 rare manuscripts along with 11 books of Khwaja Muhammad Darab were put on display at the event. Khwaja Muhammad Darab is considered to be the last Persian poet of the valley. The exhibition was attended by a large number of intellectuals and literature enthusiasts. ये जो छोटी चीजें हैं जो कंप्यूटर ने नोट नहीं किए लेकिन ये कागजों में हैं तो ये हम देख सकते हैं कि ये निका नामा हो या फिर इवन नील आमस्ट्रॉंग से बातें हो या दीवाने साहेब हो हम देख सकते हैं कि हमारा कल्चर का क्या वैल्यू था जो कि हम यस ऑफ कोर्स द यंग जनरेशन इज फॉरगेटिंग वो हम भूल रहे हैं लेकिन ये आई थिंक हम सबकी जिम्मेदारी है कि ये हम प्रिजर्व करें क्योंकि हमें से फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सीखने को बहुत कुछ मिलता है वी कैन सी कि उस जमाने में भी लोग कितने इंटेलेक्चुअल थे वो क्या बातें थी कैसी छोटी बड़ी चीज़ें को प्रिजर्व किया जाता था क्या कम्युनिकेशन होता था मैं बहुत मुतासर हुआ ये जान कर के मोहम्मद अमीन दाराम साहब हमारे लास्ट पर्सन पॉइंट है यहाँ पर तो एक ये हमारा खुद का सरमाया है देखिए हम इससे ना हम हमें ये मालूम नहीं था हम पहली बार आ रहे हैं कि और ये इनका कलाम जान रहे हैं इनकी पोइट्री इनका प्रोज कलेक्शन देख रहे हैं तो हमें ये अंदाज़ा लग रहा है कि इन्होंने कितना काम किया है और छुपा हुआ था ये काम तो ये एक अच्छा इनिशिएटिव लिया है जिन्होंने भी लिया इन टैक्ट लिया है प्लेटफॉर्म हमें मिलता है हम जैसे नौजवानों के कि हम इस डरेक्शन में जाएँ और यहाँ पर रिसर्च करने का एक आ, इनका एक मतलब इस फील्ड में पर्शियन में ज़्यादातर नहीं होता है तो एक रास्ता मिल जाता है कि हम हाँ जो पर्शियन जो है ये इस इस चीज़ से इस अमल से इस इकदाम से वो रिवाइव हो सकता है 
The Persian language reached its peak in Kashmir during the Mughal rule but faded over the course of time. It is through the exhibitions like these that the younger generations keep on learning about the rich past and literature. These kinds of exhibitions are also useful in taking a walk in the rich past of Jammu and Kashmir and acknowledging the different cultures and societies that have played a major role in shaping today's literature and lifestyle in the territory. This exhibition is important for the upcoming generation to know about their Kashmiri roots and the fact that not only Iran but great Persian poets have emerged from Jammu and Kashmir as well. And in the end, we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. Singapore's countdown event Star Island was being cancelled due to COVID-19 for the last three years, but came back with a bang in the year 2022. Japanese company JCB is supporting this event and the entire world is looking forward to it, especially to its New Year celebrations. Uh, we have two purposes uh, by holding this event. Uh, at first, uh, we aim to boost travel uh, recovery from foreign countries such as uh, Indonesia, Thailand, uh, Vietnam and the Philippines like ASEAN countries, uh, of course Japan as well. Uh, as you know, right, so due to the COVID-19 spread, uh, the number of customers, uh, number of tourists from foreign countries has been dropped. We can appeal with using this uh, event and promotion for our customers in these countries where JCB card issued. Uh, we can contribute inbound tourism in Singapore and one of important mission for the company who do the business in Singapore. And second thing is we would like to uh, enhance our presence in the market. Uh, of course, our mission is to prepare for uh, our customer to uh, be able to use JCB card whenever they want. Uh, it is uh, quite important for us to make our partnership and merchant to understand JCB and it's quite important for uh, making the environment close to our vision. JCB is determined to contribute towards the development of global tourism, especially after the global tourism industry is reviving after the pandemic halt. Egyptian artist and graphic designer Imad Hamdi Shaban spends hours each day transforming waste into works of art. The 41-year-old who grew up with a passion for handicrafts creates a paste from leftover paper, cardboard and sponges, which he then uses to create art pieces that range from ornaments to house models. His aim is to inspire others to protect the environment while creating an additional income for his family by selling his art online. The father of one said his young daughter also loves art and even helps him out sometimes with his work. Japanese motorbike giant Yamaha Motor recently announced its Raising Safety Declaration. President of Yamaha Motors, Mr. Yoshihiro Hidaka, explained what is the safety vision of the firm. Yamaha's history goes back to the year 1955, when the firm released its first bike, YA1. The bike was designed in a way to keep the passengers safe for smooth ride and easy application of brakes by the riders. It is this spirit of safety in Yamaha Motors that is being carried forward to the present day as well. Yamaha 
技量つながるこれらを軸にした安全をもとにユーザーが楽しみながらその能力を高められることで得られる喜びや感動を提供しお客様とともに事故のない社会を目指しますヤマハモーターズカンジダーズイセーフティーオフィスパッセンジャーズアプライオリティーアンメイクシューダッドオールイスモーターバイクルズアイジーアンセーフトゥライド That's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback at myindia at ani.com. I'm your host, Uzma, and it's goodbye from the entire production team. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.